This video is for the course Project Management for Technology, and this is a discussion of Chapter 2, Roles. I'm James M. Renault, Ph.D. from Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video lecture. In this video, I want to talk about the major roles that people or organizations or contractors can take in a project. I want to jump right out, though, and, and come to the bottom of the slide here. And remember that roles, that these are roles. These are jobs. They're not necessarily individual peoples. A person could have several roles. Um, a person could be the sponsor and a stakeholder. Uh, a project manager could be coordinator, scheduler altogether. Um, Members of the PMO could be some of this and some of the others. So remember that that these are not individual people. These are roles that people or organizations take within your project. And the roles that I want to talk about are the role of the sponsor, the project manager, the project coordinator, the scheduler, the stakeholder, the project team. And then lastly, I want to talk about the role of a project management office in managing a project. So the first role of individuals I want to talk about is the role of being a stakeholder. Now, I mentioned stakeholder in a previous presentation, but today I really want to focus in on what the definition of a stakeholder is. And according to uh, Kim Heldman um, on page 31, you'll find the book in the references, a stakeholder is a person or organization that has a vested interest in your project. So, there are people that that either want the project to survive or may want the project to be successful. And sometimes there are people that oppose the project or disapprove of doing the project. They're still stakeholders. So what we have to do as project people, as project managers, as even team members on a project, we need to gather consensus of our stakeholders. We need to be sure we know what the stakeholders really want and what they really need. We need to get direction from these stakeholders. And I use the abbreviation SME here. SME stands for Subject Matter Expert. You'll also hear it referred to as a SME. Um, that's just a term you'll hear used in meetings and you'll hear thrown around. But a SME is a Subject Matter Expert. And it's up to us to get direction from these people that really understand the project and understand the needs and understand what they need and what they want. Um, we have to review the project, and and the uh, stakeholders will review the project throughout the organ throughout the uh, throughout the development of of the of whatever we're developing with the project. They need to approve, and they may disapprove um, actions within the project. Again, a stakeholder may support or oppose. For instance, what if the stakeholder has a vested interest in uh, the product that this new project or new product is going to replace? What if they've been working on that product for 30 years and don't think it needs to be replaced? So you're going to have to deal with, with both the supporters as well as the opposition. Also, remember that stakeholders could be the final customer. And I use the word customer to represent the people that are actually going to use the product created by the project. So stakeholders are a, a, just anybody who has an interest in the success or failure of your project. The next really important role that we all need to understand is who is the sponsor? Sometimes you'll also hear the sponsor called the champion of the project. So they're the cheerleader. They're the ones that are really forcing this to happen. Usually they're senior management um, in an organization or management of some sort in an organization. And they're the ones that control the budget. They're our champion. They get the money. They approve our project charter. They approve and understand our high-level requirements and may even give us those requirements. They help us build justification throughout the business. They help us hire a uh, project manager and authorize the release of employees to work on the project. They make the final decisions. They monitor the project. 
And a, a sponsor champion may also have to go build support from other sponsors and champions working on other projects or operational individuals to build support for this project. And last, the sponsor protects the project from other projects, from poaching of employees to other projects, and protects the budget. Once the sponsor has committed, um, the, the sponsor will help you as a project manager to protect the budget and to protect the integrity of getting the project done. Now, it's up to you as the project manager on the project team to be in communication with the sponsor also because they've got to know what's going on. The next role I'd like to describe or discuss is the role of the project manager. The project manager's role is, well, it's exactly what the name of the role kind of, kind of alludes to. The project manager communicates with the stakeholders and with the project team to keep things happening. They maintain the records. They maintain the artifacts of the project. Um, the emails, the communications, the, the, the schedules, the, the diagrams, and all of those things. A project manager manages so much more, though, than just the project. A project manager manages the project team, the people working on the project. The project manager has to manage the scope of the project, and we'll define scope in, in, in another presentation, but the scope is the overall kind of fence around the project that describes what the project is and what the project isn't. The project manager is also uh, manages the risks of the project. Every project includes risks, and we'll talk about risk, uh, ma uh, risk management in another chapter. The pro uh, project manager is in charge of the day-to-day -day operations of the budget, uh, schedule, and the, even the quality of, of the final results and the work being done. So the project manager's job is, is more than just managing the project. It's managing all of these different areas that come together to make the project happen. That's one of the reasons why being a project manager is such a dynamic and rewarding field. Now, in small projects, the project manager may be the coordinator and the scheduler all at the same time because there are roles that can all be held by one person. But in larger projects, um, a project manager may have a coordinator who helps and supports the project manager in certain areas. For instance, there may be a coordinator that manages the wiki page that's used to communicate or manages um, document storage or manages um, helping the, the uh, project manager to communicate and write letters and those types of things. There might even be a risk management coordinator on, on certain kinds of projects or a, a quality assurance coordinator on certain projects. Another uh, role that you will see in, in a project is the uh, role of the scheduler. The scheduler is a person or a role that helps to maintain, develop, and communicate the schedule. And we'll be talking about scheduling in, in future presentations, but um, they're the ones that, that create the calendar, that, that budget the time, that, that may even help schedule contractors and subcontractors and employees to work on the projects. They work with the teams, the contractors, the vendors, and uh, work their best to keep the schedule as published, as accurate as possible. Remembering that a schedule always gets changed. There are always going to be things that come up during the life of a project that affects the schedule, either to the good, getting it done early, or to the bad, getting it done late. And to have a scheduler or to stay on top of the schedule is a very important part of the role of a project management team that includes the coordinator, the schedule, the project manager, and others. Another important role are the actual team members on the project. They're the employees, contractors, consultants, subcontractors, vendors, and all of the mass amounts of others who are actually doing the work on the project. The project team members. They have all kinds of duties, doing their job, getting things done, knowing and working to the schedule, um, 
estimating, estimating how close they are to being on schedule and otherwise, reporting the time they've spent, maintaining quality, um, uh, communicating risks back to the project management team, communicating issues. I mean, there are just so many things that a project team member has to do in addition to just the day-to-day -day work that they've been assigned. Um, it requires a lot of communication, again, between the project team members and the project management team. In larger organizations that do a lot of projects, you may find a project management office or PMO. And the project management office is a central office or group of individuals that manage projects centrally. They develop standardized tools, procedures, templates, documents, and ways to communicate. They help to develop uh, key performance indicators or KPIs for projects and just coordinate the whole thing of, of projects and the way projects work together. A PMO can be very helpful in creating the standardized documents. And once an organization has adopted a more centralized project management uh, hierarchy through a project management office, employees then will become very comfortable with the next project because it's being managed similarly to previous projects rather than every project being managed in an ad hoc manner. Kim Heldman's 2017 book, CompTIA Project Plus Study Exam Guide, published by John Wiley and Sons, was referenced in this presentation. This presentation was copyright 2019 by James Imbrano, Ph.D. You can contact me at jreno at shawnee.edu. Remember that this work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial share alike, 4.0, international license, and I would like to say thank you for watching.